Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games. I am Harry, and before we go any further, please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to our channel if you're interested in some more board game related content. Today we have the second ever episode of Thursday's Tabletop Tangent, TTT. And this is basically just a variety show where I speak in tangent form about any topic of my choice. Right? And who can stop me? And today's topic of choice will be deck building games and why I love them so much. I absolutely love decking, deck building games. So many of these games, you know, comprise my top 20, my top 50, my top 100 board games of all time. And first of all, I'd like to start off with a little history, which I already touched a little bit and alluded to in my first episode of... Um, Thursday's Tabletop Tangent, which was a few weeks ago, where I basically gave a little bit of my history as a board gamer, as a hobbyist in the board gaming hobby. And now I will allude a little bit to more to it, which is the fact that some of the games that were very key and transitional periods in my gaming history to becoming a full-blown hardcore gamer, they were deck building games. I think of DC Deck Building Game. This is a game that I played in early 2016 when my friend Wayne introduced it to me. And it was new and different than anything I've ever played before that. I've played a few um, designer games at that point. I played Catan. I played Rivals for Catan. I had played Carcassonne. And of course, obviously, I played lots of mass market games, Risk. Monopoly and so on and so forth, but I had never really played a lot of designer games Not a lot of the modern more modern designer games because even games like Carcassonne is pretty old So deck building was very different for me very unique. I love superheroes even though DC deck building is not my favorite brand of superheroes I do like DC deck building DC heroes a lot, especially Batman So it was neat for me and it was just a cool different mechanism and I enjoyed the game but at the same time because I was not as big of a fan as the DC deck of DC, uh, the DC, you know, universe as I am of Marvel, I decided to do some research on Amazon and see if there was any deck building games for Marvel, for Marvel, for the Marvel universe. And lo and behold, there was Marvel Legendary, and I instantly bought it. And it was pretty expensive at that time. It was the most money I ever played for a board game. I think I play, I paid close to fifty dollars for Marvel Legendary. If, I, if it didn't already make it to the 50, it was definitely over the $45 barrier. But I felt like it was worth it. And it was so cool just opening that box. I still have it right here. Right here's my Marvel Legendary box. Opening that box and seeing all the content inside and opening the cards, taking out the shrink wrap and seeing all the different characters that I love. Spider-Man and Iron Man and Hulk and Cyclops and Wolverine. All these great guys. Some of the greatest heroes on the base game. And I loved the game. And I was like, wow, this game is even better than DC Deck Building. And as time has gone on, the the um, gulf between the two of them has just grown bigger and bigger. Because I absolutely adore Marvel Legendary. And I'm a little ho-hum about DC Deck Building. But I bought Marvel Legendary. I instantly started a league. Got a bunch of my friends and my wife. She was the only girl. <laughs> to join us. And we had a league with seasons with structured gaming schedules and a playoff tournament and a championship game at the end and we did that for about three years and it was so much fun but in 2017 after about a year of playing marvel legendary um i decided to start exploring a little bit more into deck building games see because what happened is i was like i love marvel legendary and i love dc deck building are there other deck building games with different themes let me look into that, right? And I did some research and I stumbled across the Dice Tower and that's a big part of why I'm here today. And and they did a top 10 or a couple videos of top 10 deck building games. And I looked at the games and I perused through them and there was a lot of things that caught my attention. And one of the games that caught my attention was Dominion, the grandfather of all the deck building games. And after watching... You know, I'm talking about Dominion and watching some reviews on Dominion. I decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to buy right now two boxes of Dominion. I'm going to buy Dominion and I'm going to buy Dominion Intrigue. And that was around March of 2017. And that is 
That is the turning point that I consider officially when I became a gamer. I will say that. I feel like prior to that, it's hard for me to say I was a gamer because even though I've always loved games and I've spent money on games, it was always the mass market games and it was always like the idea of the game more than the game itself. I don't know how to explain it. But when I bought two boxes, about $70 worth of money for a game that I've never played, that I, have it's not a theme that I'm super huge on, like I am about superheroes. That to me was so experimental. It was really what got me down the rabbit hole. And going forward, I started every other week or so. I was buying games nonstop till this, till this day. Please, I need some help. I need to check in somewhere because I can't stop. And Dominion is a big part of it. Um, so that's the history of my love for deck building games. Now, let's talk a little bit about contemporary events right current events thunderstone quest is a game that i've been playing recently i started playing it late last year i'd say about maybe july of last year i started playing thunderstone quest and i am already so in love with that game i like that game so much i'm even playing it solo now i love the fantasy theme i love just the spatial element of how you move from from board to board. And it's funny because I had seen so much about Thunderstone, regular Thunderstone, and it was out of print. I'd seen so much about Thunderstone Advance, and it was out of print. And I was so sad about that. And now I'm glad that I never even tried to buy a used copy because Thunderstone Quest is just amazing. You gotta navigate between, you know, the the um the dungeon and the village. I'm not here to give a review. This game is amazing and it's really you know, added to just my love for deck building and the different things that can happen with deck building and just how deck building lends itself to variability. That's one of the things I like about deck building. Because it's card based and you can and you gotta come up with so much cards. Right? So first of all, you need a theme that can encompass that type of density, right? You cannot get a superficial theme where you cannot come up with enough cards. So that's it. You always have to have to tap into very rich, you know, thematic tropes or very rich, you know, intellectual properties, right? Because something that's not more developed just won't lend itself to having a variety of many, many different cards. Because you have to have a variety or else you're not going to be able to deck build because deck building consists of getting a bigger deck. And you don't want to have too many duplicates in that deck. So you want to have some variety. And also just the idea of replayability right if, if you have if you have few cards then that game is not gonna get played many times because you'll you'll see it over and over again every time you play a deck building game so i feel like you know it requires and at the same time lends itself to variability um so that's one of the things i like card games i really like card games i like the tactile experience of holding a card in my hand and i also like it mechanically because while it's fun to roll dice i get very frustrated when dice are not rolled to my advantage to my benefit and i feel like i lost the game not only because of my bad dice rolling but also because of a combination of somebody else's good dice rolling it just feels too swingy for me right and i probably wouldn't complain so much if i was on the winning end of things more often than not but i'm not so i will complain but card games, it gives me the illusion that I'm more in control. And don't get me wrong, there is some luck to card build to card games because you're you're shuffling cards and you're drawing them, right? How you manage your cards, how you play your cards, how you milk them for all they're worth, that's in your control, and that feels good. How you draw them, that's a little bit of, of luck. But I feel like a deck building game helps you mitigate that because. You don't just have a deck of cards that was assigned to you and now you got to shuffle it and, and deal with it. No, you acquired your deck over the course of, of several turns. You made decisions throughout the game to acquire certain cards because you felt like they were good for your deck. So when you don't draw cards, you got to factor in the probability and the fact that to some extent this is your fault. So again, it helps you mitigate it. It makes you take ownership for your ac actions. 
And again, I just feel like I'm more in control. And when I lose a game, I feel like I really lost. And when I win a game, I feel like I really win. Um, so that's just card games in general, and it's especially deck building games. Also, I feel like it's an exercise in efficiency, which I've heard people use that phrase in a negative way. But I actually like that. I actually like the idea of trying to be more efficient than my other opponents. I like the idea of saying, well, these are the cards that are available in this particular deck building game. How can I construct my deck in a way that will be more effective and efficient in the long term than my other opponents? And that's how I go about it. I go about long term. I, I'm not a, 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 a lot of the people that I play are, are trying to get, get rich quick as far as deck building games are concerned. I play for the long game, which means I do lose because sometimes players just beat me to the punch. But if those games last long enough, my record, my win loss record tends to be pretty high. And I love that challenge of just trying to build the most efficient deck possible. And all again, the variability makes that a stimulating challenge. Because if I always play the same game, I would just get bored. I would say, well, last time I won by doing XYZ, so I will do XYZ again. But the variability forces me to in, in, approach each and every single gameplay as something unique and different and totally, totally new from the prior plays. And I find that to be exciting. Also, I love the idea of managing currency, right? And even though currency is not always monetary in nature in these deck building games, it's still, in theory, a currency. For example, in DC deck building, it's power. Well, power is your currency. In Marvel, you have recruit and you have attack. And those are two different types of currencies. Yes, in Dominion, it comes out more straightforward. You have gold, right? Um... And some other cards have some sort of monetary currency as well. But any 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 type of resource, whatever it's you know titled or or the terminology used for it, that you have to you know manage and budget is such a neat thing for me. And I especially like games that have deck building games that have multiple currencies. If you have two or more currencies, I find that to be even neater. Clank, clank, the regular clank. I have never played Clank in Space. I still haven't even thought of playing clank legacy which i am highly intrigued by but in clank the base game you have three different currencies you have gold or money you have swords or attack and finally you have boots or movement that allow you to move and it it carries the all the different phases of the game you're attacking monsters you're you know you're buying stuff and you're also um you're also moving throughout the, the, the dungeon. I find it to be neat. I find it to be such a challenge, you know. How can I be efficient as possible in all three of these currencies? How can I be as efficient as possible in all these three, three of these areas? It's easy when you're only managing one currency to try to get very, very good in that one currency. But when you're doing those three, striking that right balance of do I have enough of this and, and am I not neglecting that? I find that to be very, very cool, very, very neat in deck building the currencies and the managing of these currencies. Also, I like the idea of calling, right? I like the idea that you start weak, you have a very weak deck, and that these games tend to offer ways to get rid of some of these earlier starting cards or weaker cards, right? So as the game goes on, not only is your deck stronger by virtue of you having acquired valuable cards, but it's also stronger as a result of you having called or gotten rid of or trashed or destroyed, whatever term your, your game gives to it, by having get, gotten rid of these different cards. And I've seen some people get so attached to their cards, they don't want to destroy their cards. And I always tell them, listen, in a deck building game, starting cards are always a waste of time. If you can get rid of a starting card, do so and do so as quick as possible. And that is so neat because as you're trashing these cards, as you're calling these cards, you're seeing that you're getting to the good stuff more often because yes, you might have a lot of good cards there, but you're going to wait a while to see them because there's still so much of these diluted weak cards in the deck. So I really like the idea of call. I like the idea of storytelling. I do feel that not every deck builder is a storytelling game. Dominion, for example, doesn't really tell a story. I like it and I like it a lot because of how smooth it is, how quick it is and how intuitive and gateway it is in nature. But it's not very much of a story. But, you know, Marvel Legendary, Thunderstone Quest, DC deck building with the Crisis expansions. These add some storyline elements to it. Clank feels a little bit like a story. I like the idea 
of how stories are implemented in deck building games. I feel like when when designers go through the trouble of trying to implement some kind of story in their deck building games, it works very well, at least for me. Um, so that's pretty much the reasons why I love deck building games. I do want to share, before we wrap up the video, I do want to share some of the deck building games that I am interested in playing or acquiring in the future, right? Because I have played a good amount of deck building games and there's still a few that I own that are on the horizon that will, will be played sh soon enough. But these are games, I want to share five games, and there's more, but these are the five top ones, the five deck building games that I do not own and have not played that I'm most interested and excited about playing. And pay attention because I would like and appreciate your opinions if you've played any of these as to which ones you think I should try first because I can honestly tell you I would have to do like eeny, meeny, miny, mo to decide which one I want to try or play with first. So first of all, Core Worlds is one of the deck building games that I want to play. I've heard lots of people say good things about it. I know that... Um, Rebecca and Hunter in Family Showdown. They really like this game. Tom Vassell really likes Core Worlds. It's kind of like a, the science fiction representation for deck building games. I do have Star Realms, but I find Star Realms to be a very light deck building game. This seems to be a meatier one. The, the, the negative things I've heard about it is how meaty it is or how mathy it is. A lot of math, a lot of number crunching, but it still sounds intriguing to me and I know that it has a good amount of expansion content which is something i look for in a deck building game i'm also interested in playing shadow rift which is a fantasy themed game and the original it's in its second edition right now but the original shadow rift if i'm not mistaken came out not too after thunderstone but thunderstone has had so much more success at least a cult following level it's had success it keeps on going out of print, so how successful can it be? At least the first two editions of Thunderstone Quest, Thunderstone, went out of uh, print. But Shadow Rift sounds very interesting, and it is a, a cooperative game. So that's another thing that I like about it. And I've heard that it has some very unique um, implementations of the deck building mechanism. Um, lots of different decks that you're managing, a neat uh, you know, villager thing. And these are just things that I've heard different people say. Um, so I'm very, very curious. This game has been in my radar forever since one of those original, you know, top 10 videos. I think I've been considering, uh, Shadow Rift for a very, very long time. So you let me know if you've played it, what you think. Another game is Paperback. I've heard a lot of good things about Paperback. Um, just to, just to be able to get the Scrabble field without having to play actual Scrabble. I'm, I'm done with Scrabble or, or any iteration of Scrabble. Um, but to get that that feel, and also just the idea, um, I heard Radu mention it, it's that because you're dealing with words, you're creating words, you kind of have an endless supply of variety there, right? There is an expansion for paperback, and I think there's a standalone expansion, or, you know, uh, 2.0 hardback, but if you don't need tons of expansions because you're never going to run out of words. And that sounds cool and that sounds neat. And, I, and I've heard of, of a couple other neat twists and mechanisms that this has in the deck building uh, area. And then also Legendary Aliens. Uh, I love Marvel Legendary. I think it's a great core system of, of, of deck building. And basically Legendary Aliens is the same system with a few different changes as to how, you know, cards are, are, are moved, how they move through the board right the board is different than the regular marvel legendary how you manipulate these different things but it looks cool um i, I it's more highly critically acclaimed that's the word it's more critically acclaimed than marvel legendary not as popular obviously because the marvel ip is much more popular than the aliens ip but it's something that's been interesting me a lot i like the concept of how the cooperation works in that game um, so I think there's like a collaborate option where you can like help a player on their turn. I think that is a neat concept. So again, the only thing that hurts this game for me is that I feel like it's, while it's different than Marvel Legendary from what I heard, it's also somewhat similar to Marvel Legendary. So why not get one of these other deck building games that are radically different? But hey, if the gaming experience is good enough 
please let me know and I'll disregard the fact that it's within the legendary system and I'll just I'll get that game. And then finally, the last game that I'm interested in the deck building genre is Mystic Veil. And basically because of its innovation, I, I hear it's a card crafting game where you don't necessarily build a thick deck of cards, but I guess you build cards themselves. You craft them by drafting different sleeves, I think it is. Again, I've never played this game. I haven't even really looked at any reviews, but I've, I've heard people talk about it. And I've heard good things. And the innovative idea of card crafting sounds really neat to me. Where basically you're sliding cards inside of one another. And and it adds to it. So you can have a lot of cards that are kind of powerful. Or you can have a few cards that are very powerful. Sounds very interesting to me. The theme, I don't know. But it sounds interesting to me. Again, if you recommend it, I'll take your word for it. So those are the five deck building games that I'm interested in. So that is today's Tabletop Tangent, Thursday's Tabletop Tangent. Just wanted to talk about deck building games, and I love them. You tell me if you love them. Tell me how you feel about deck building games. Can you do without it? Maybe you're played, you're, you're burned out on it, you're played out on it. You want to try something different. Um, you have another fad that you're interested in. Maybe you think they're amazing. Maybe they're the only types of games you play, right? They do kind of lend themselves to that lifestyle type of gameplay. So you let me know in the comments down below how you feel about deck building games. But I want to thank you all for taking some time out to watch this video and showing this channel some love and some support. Don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to our channel if you're interested in some more board game related content. Well, this is Harry from When Harry Met Board Games signing off saying take care, stay healthy, stay safe, and enjoy some gaming. See you later.